Hi, my name is Daniel Musher. I'm a member of the infectious disease section at the Michael E. DeBakey VA Hospital Houston. I'm professor of medicine and also of molecular virology and microbiology at the Baylor College of Medicine. The proceedings of the Mayo Clinic have uh, accepted and prepared to publish a paper of mine and the title of that is Should Committees That Issue Guidelines and Recommendations Publish Dissenting Opinions? I've raised this question because I've been a member of several of these committees and sometimes I've largely agreed with the recommendations and there have been a few occasions where I have very strongly disagreed and one most recently where I most strongly disagreed and felt that I was correct. Now, here's the specific context in which I wrote this. I was on the working group that recommended the use of the new conjugate pneumococcal vaccine for adults. The vaccine that's been available since the 1980s it consists of polysaccharides of pneumococci. They were first were 14 and now there are 23. And I'll call it by its trade name Pneumovax, the way people would use aspirin by its trade name, not because I'm advocating any particular uh, brand. Uh, Pneumovax is, in my opinion, highly effective in protecting adults against pneumococcal pneumonia. It's not so good at protecting immunocompromised adults. And I think there's ample literature demonstrating both of those points. The Pneumovax is effective in protecting adults against pneumococcal pneumonia, but is not protective in infants or very young children. In the late 1990s, the concept of linking pneumococcal polysaccharides to a protein was developed and a magnificent study at the Kaiser Permanente demonstrated the remarkable efficacy of protein conjugated pneumococcal polysaccharides. The CDC's advisory uh, uh, committee on immunization practices of course recommended the use of Prevnar 13 in tiny children and this has become the standard of practice in the land and the result has been a tremendous reduction in invasive pneumococcal infection in tiny children. And as an indirect effect, this vaccine also has had a tremendous impact in adults in reducing the incidence of disease caused by those strains of pneumococcus. The ACIP asked a working group to consider recommending the use of Prevnar 13 in adults. And there were about 15 or 20 of us who got together in telephone conferences. And many members of that committee felt that there should be a recommendation to use Prevnar 13 in adults. I felt very strongly that there should not be any such recommendation. And there were several very good reasons, in my opinion, for my recommendation. First, it was assumed that because it was a protein conjugate vaccine, there would be higher levels of antibody and the antibody would persist for a longer period of time. In vitro studies showed that the beneficial effects of either Prevnar or Pneumovax were surprisingly short-lived. Uh, they certainly did not show any prolonged benefit from Prevnar 13. Then the assumption was that Pneumovax does not protect adults against pneumococcal pneumonia. That concept is based on one Cochrane review that basically excluded most of the studies that were ever done on pneumococcal vaccine. There have been other Cochrane analyses, and the one that I think is far more reliable shows about a 70% protective effect of pneumococcal vaccine, that is of pneumovax, against pneumococcal pneumonia. So in my opinion, there already is a vaccine that is protective. The final piece of evidence that the subcommittee used was the very large study done in the Netherlands where pneumococcal vaccine has never been used in adults. This study compared the incidence of pneumonia in adults who received either Prevnar 13 or placebo. 
it should be no surprise that in a non-vaccinated non population, recipients of Prevnar 13 were protected against pneumonia due to the 13 types contained in the vaccine. Very interestingly, the study in the Netherlands excluded subjects who were immune compromised. Well, in the course of the study, a number of people became immune compromised. They developed an immune compromising condition or they were put on steroids for some reason. And when they were analyzed separately, there was no protection by Prevnar 13 in that group. So the idea that Prevnar, because it's protein linked, is going to be a much better vaccine in people who are immune compromised was actually opposed by the results of the Netherlands study. Based on all this evidence, the working committee recommended the ACIP that Prevnar 13 be adopted routinely for use in older adults and for all adults uh, above the age of 19 who have immune compromising conditions. I very, very strongly opposed it. I was outvoted. People say that the recommendations are graded. So you get a grade for the strength of the evidence and for the strength of the recommendation. But that doesn't take into account minority opinions. Let's say of the committee that had, I'm going to guess, 15 or 16 folks. Let's say that 11 or 12 felt strongly that it was good evidence and good, strong recommendation. If three or four of us opposed it very strongly, that's lost to history. And I think that's what happened. So that's what led me to my interest in the Supreme Court decision process and to writing this article. So in summary, my view is that the recommendation should have been continued use of the polysaccharide vaccine. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.